Hi, this is Oja, and you're watching the making of Rune Cipher. In this devlog, I'll share how I built this dynamic 2D craft that changes with the game's weather system and can interact with the player character. To make the grass system, we're going to be using the particle shader in Godot. I know shaders can seem complicated at first sight, but the final effect is a product of several quite simple procedures layered on top of each other. I recommend pausing the video to understand each step and even trying your hand in implementing the grass as you follow along. With that said, let's get started. This is devlog 1 of Rune Cipher, Touch from Grass. The only art asset I'll be using is this single tall grass sprite or wheat stock for the particle. We will use Godot's tile map layer to place the grass particles. Here we've placed a single tile on the game map. We will spawn our grass particles within the bounds of this tile. We use the particle shader's built-in variable transform within the start function. This initializes the properties of a particle right when it's emitted. To spawn the particle, let's provide a random x and y position for the position vector. And we make sure that it only spawns within the bounds of the tile. Then, if we change the amount of particles spawned, we can control the density of the tall grass. Nice. Remember to set the lifetime of the particle to the maximum amount and have a script respawn the particle once the lifetime countdown is reached. We also stored the particle's initial position and skew values as reference points, so we can reset the grass back to its natural state after wind or player forces stop affecting it. Lastly, we assign a randomized rigidity parameter to represent how much the grass particle resists these forces. This is everything we need to do in the start function. The first force we'll apply to the grass is the base sway movement. Think of it as the idle state for the grass. We will need these three parameters. To move the grass, we will update the position in the process function, which is called every frame. Before we do anything else, let's return the transform to the original skew and position so that the particle tries to come back to its default state at the beginning of the process function. Next, let's figure out the base sway movement. We take the current time, speed it up or slow it down using our sway speed, then feed that into a sine wave. The sine function gives us that smooth back and forth motion and sway strength controls how far the grass actually moves. We can now adjust the parameters of the shader to get some nice movement going. It's important to find a balance of parameters for a nice natural sway. Uh, don't go too crazy with these because, uh, yeah, it might look like this. Now we can make the final part of the shader, the wind. But before that, let's talk a little bit about noise textures and how useful they can be for your game's visuals. Think of noise textures as organized randomness, patterns that look natural and organic. In game development, we use noise textures to simulate things that occur naturally in the real world, like flowing water or terrain generation, and in our case, wind patterns. To create the wind, we will need three new variables, a wind direction, a noise scale, and the noise texture itself. To make the particle react to the wind, we also need to provide each grass particle's position to the shader. With that in place, we can create the noise function. We make a scrolling effect by combining wind direction, time, and wind speed. This makes our noise texture flow across the world like real wind patterns. Then we sample that moving noise at each grass blade's world position. The noise scale controls how zoomed in or out we are on the noise pattern, and the red channel gives us a wind strength value for that exact spot on the map. This is what the noise texture looks like when we display it on the red color channel of the particles. You can see that the noise texture creates these natural spheres of influence or force over the grass particles. Now we can apply the wind forces to the grass. Let's return to the process function and initialize the wind effect parameter and set it to a zero vector too. We only apply the wind effect if our wind strength is above zero. Let's use our wind noise function to get a smooth wind parameter and adjust it from a zero to one range to a negative one to positive one range. This allows the grass to move in the direction of the wind during a gust and in the opposite direction during a lull in the effect. We then get back our rigidity parameter that we set up before to apply a particle-specific custom resistance to the wind. Now we have all the pieces we need. We combine the wind direction, strength, and our noise value, then multiply by how flexible each grass blade is. Remember, rigid grass barely moves while flexible grass bends easily. 
Finally, we apply the wind effect to the transform vector. I want most of the movement to apply horizontally, so I only provide a tenth of the strength to the y vector. And that's all there is to it for the wind. With the direction and strength parameters, you can create different atmospheres in the game world. To really sell the look of this grass, we can make it interact with the player. To do this, create a shader global called player position and pass in the player character's position to the shader. This way multiple shaders can receive this information and interact with the player. Now whenever the player character is some threshold away from the grass particle, we can offset the position of the grass in a natural way away from the direction of the player. Here's what that looks like. And there you have it, that's how we create a fully interactive grass system in Godot 4. You can use different particles to make dynamic weather events in your game. Uh, just an example here, I've used a burning grass particle and the wind system can spread the fire towards the wind direction. I hope this breakdown was helpful and gives you some ideas for your own projects. Particle shaders can seem intimidating at first, but once you understand the basics, they open up so many creative possibilities. If you found this useful, let me know in the comments if you want to see any other shader effects. In future videos, I'd like to share the process of creating other game systems for RuneCypher. Things like procedural animations and a pixel art water shader, light and shadow systems. If you're interested in any of that, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.